The purpose of this video is to help you import a .prn file, which is also the same method as bringing in a .pdf file, which are print report files. Sometimes this can also be a .txt file if a print report was sent out to a .txt file. Now hopefully you've already watched the video from Automation Services, and so this is a quick approach to exactly what they did there but not providing as much feedback as to why you're doing what you're doing. I'm just going to go through the process from beginning to end of bringing in this travel report file. First thing, make sure you have the file. So if you're in your tutorial project, you should already have the files here in your source files. Now if you don't, just right click and add the file. In this case I went and put the print file on my desktop which I'm now going to add to my source file. So if I click here, I can see my travel report.prn file. Now that I have it added to my source files, I want to look at my file explorer. I don't have any files brought in yet, no databases, and I'm going to import a desktop database. This is not a text file, like a comma delimited, colon delimited, any of those. This is a print file, so it's a print report. Click on that. Make sure you've selected the correct file. If you're using your tutorial project, you may have multiple files. I'm just focusing on this print report file, and that's the only file I've brought into my source files. Choose Next. And what it does is it gives you a quick preview of that file. Now, we haven't done any DAF definitions yet to let IDEA recognize these data for whatever type they are. So the first thing you want to do is you want to skim over the whole file and see what kind of pattern the data is provided in. You'll see that there is a report title which is probably from this date on up. And this is the like the report header. And then we come to a section purpose conferences. So it seems like all of these expenses are for a conference. And then if you go down further, you see there's a subtotal of all those detailed items. And now we get to a new section, which is training. And there's all these detailed training expenses, and they have a subtotal. And then we get to work, and all that detail, and we get to a subtotal, and that's it. What you don't see in this case is there's no report footer, which adds up all these subtotals. Uh, some reports may have that. So what we need to do is we need to help idea recognize when it's in detail and when it's in just more like a a section header. So we can actually choose any one of these detailed rows from here on down or even down further. What you're trying to do is choose one that's typical of all the detailed rows. I like to choose the one that probably has the longest data for each column. So you see here we have Los Angeles. It's a bit longer than Dallas and New York. So I'm going to choose this. And American Airlines is a very long um, airline name, certainly longer than KLM, KLM. And so I'm going to choose that one. And I'm also choosing the one that has maybe the longest amount. Uh, now just to teach something, I'll, I'll choose this one that's just above there where the amount isn't quite as wide as maybe some of the others. Okay, So I'm going to highlight from one side to the next. I guess I don't even have to highlight all the way across, but I've clicked that row and I want to create what's called a standard layer. And what it did is it brought up that row that I selected as the standard layer and now I'm going to try to help IDEA recognize what is it about this standard layer that's the same for all detailed items. Okay, so this is a standard layer for the detail and what kind of pattern do I see in here that actually is indicative of every other detailed line? So what I do see is that from here to here there's a date and nowhere else in the report other than in detailed rows, see there are all the detailed rows, is there that format of a date. So I'm going to help IDEA know whenever you find a date from this position to this position that's part of a detail. Alright, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say, okay, this date is made up of a number, number, then a slash, then a number, number, then a slash, then four, a slash, then four numbers. And so if I can tell it 
to look for those things, it will find every single other detail line. So I'm going to go up here, and these are called traps. It's kind of like you've got a net, and you're trying to catch all those rows that follow that pattern. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to choose numeric trap. And you see that automatically it went and found all these detailed rows that have a numeric in that position. And you notice it's not picking up the subtotal row, it's not picking up the header because there's not a number in this position in the header or in the um, detailed header, none of that. And so that's probably already enough. But just to kind of go overboard, I'm going to keep hitting number and slash and number number and slash, oops, delete that, slash, I use the delete button to do that, and then number, 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 and then I pull my thumb down over here and I just make sure, did it seem like it picked up all these detailed rows, and it does. If you think back to access, these detailed rows are effectively, um, probably came from the relationship table. All right. So what I've done is I've helped IDEA find all the detailed rows. Now that I found, found the detailed rows, I'm going to tell it what the data type is for each of these. So I'm just holding my left mouse down, left mouse button down, dragging over that. And now you see when I scroll down, it's picking up from beginning to end the pin. So I need to tell IDEA that I want this attribute to be called pin. And since I'm not going to do math on this in IDEA, I'll call that a character type. And I've defined that field. So now, if I were to um, preview the database, well, I guess I'll have to wait. I'll have to save the layer first, and then I can preview the database. But once I preview it, then it'll bring this in, showing that this is a pin. Next one. You'll notice that I always have to go up in between these yellow lines to define that. So I'm going to take two characters. That seems like it's picking up all from top to bottom, like I expected. And I need to give that a name. And this is going to be employee or emp class. And it's character, and that's fine. Now I'm going to go over to date. Now with date, I want this to be a date. So I'm going to give it a name of date. But I need to change it to a date type, just as you would have done in Access. And it needs a mask. Now if you look at the data, it seems clear that the first two digits represent a day because we don't have 18 months in a year. So that's going to be day. So I'm going to go like this, DD in the mask. And the next looks like it's month. The next is going to be year, 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 year. And now that is properly defined. Now this next one, I'm going to click just from beginning to end. And you'll notice it doesn't pick up all the numbers of all the other detailed row amounts. I'm going to come back and fix that later. I'm doing this on purpose so we can show how to fix that later when we do a, a check for validity of our definitions. Okay, But I need to give that a name. That name is going to be amount. It is numeric. It is two decimals. So that one's good. Let's go to the next one. This one is town. So I want to give that a name of town. It is character. And I'm going to scroll top to bottom. Seems like that's wide enough. And you'll see the logic. Had I chosen Miami, this, this one here as my field to use as my layer, I would have defined only out to here. And then all these other characters would have been left off. They wouldn't have been grayed out had I defined only you know, this far. You see that? So that's why I chose a row that had a very long um, town name is so that I don't have to do a lot of modifications. This next one, American Airlines, once again, very wide. So let's finish up. Los Angeles, that's town, character, that's good. Next one, we have American Airlines. Once again, I have to be up in the top here. Now, you notice I clicked a little too far to the left, and that was a mistake. I'm going to right-click up here and remove that field anchor. So these are anchors that anchor from beginning to end of a given field. So I'm going to anchor it on the A all the way out to the S in the Airlines, and I want to give that a name of Airlines. And its character is fine. Next, I'm going over to miles. And that is going to be a numeric. And we'll call this air miles. It's numeric. It, there are no decimals. But I'm going to scroll down. Seems like all of them are only up to thousands. There are no ten thousands. And we're going to go to travel class. 
And travel class looks like it's character, and I need to call this trvl underscore class. And you notice it makes it all caps. All right, so what I've done is I've defined this detailed layer. And you notice that so far I'm missing a mount. Now I want to save this layer. And then I want to check it to see if idea believes that I picked up all the data for the given attributes of that layer. And I can do that by going up here. And it's like a little magnifying glass. And I click on scan for errors. And it landed on the very first one where it thought, hey, it seems like there's more data here that you left off. So you can change the field width, but watch when I change the field width. It just makes it longer moving out to the right. I really didn't want to go out to the right, so I'm going to move that back. I actually want to take this and shift it to the left, so field offset. I'm going to shift it by moving it from starting at position 39 to starting at position 38 by shrinking the field offset. You see that? So the, the width is moving. And so I've got it started at the right place, but I actually do still seem to be missing this one number. So I need to increase the field width because it increases moving out to the right. And now it seems like I'm picking up everything and uh, the whole width of the amounts that are in my data. I don't have to worry about the subtotal because I can use idea to compute subtotals. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish. Okay. And so now it seems like I've got that right and um, the layer is has already been saved. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that for each row of this detail when it's brought in that it's defined as a conference type of expense. And when we get down to the detail for training I want each of these lines to be defined as a training type of expense. And same thing for work. So the way we do that is we're going to define another layer. Now, you got to remember, you've always got to define your detail layer first. Any other layers are going to refer to that detail. So when I choose this next layer, I'm going to choose here on purpose. And I want to create a standard layer, yes. And in this case, what is it about the purpose row that's the same on every single purpose? There's always a colon. You see that colon? It's always there every time there's a new purpose. So I'm just going to go like this and just hard code a colon and you'll notice it's gray, picked up that row, picked up that row, picked up that row. So it's picked up every purpose in this report. So I've got the right um, layer and now I need to anchor the name of that purpose. And I've got conference here. And that seems wide enough to handle training and wide enough to handle work. On the right, I'll give this a name of purpose and its character. And I want to save that. Okay. Now I've got two layers here. Okay. I've got two layers. If I wanted to go up and look at those layers, I could go to Layer Manager and I can get back in and edit those layers. Okay. So I've got two layers. Now I want to preview the database. If I preview it, you'll notice that I have all these data and then I have purpose, but then it's all blank. You see that? I actually want the name conference to appear for each of these that are conference and training for each of these that are con uh, for training. And so I'm going to close that and I've got to go back and edit that layer for conference. Okay, so I'm going to go back to layers. I'm going to go to layer manager. And I'm going to edit layer two. And on this conference here, I don't want them to be blank cells when it's a repeat. For example, the word conference appeared for the first detailed item, but then it was blank for all the others. I wanted to use the value from the previous record when it's blank. Okay? So now I'm going to save that change in my layer. And I'm going to preview again. And you see what happened is it now brought in. When it was blank, it referred to the prior, prior um, record. And now we've got all those uh, purposes in there. So things are looking pretty good now. I've widened the amount to make sure I picked up everything. I've got conference appearing for every single row in conference and training for every single row of training and, and on and on. All right. 
So now I'm going to do one last check here, scan for errors. There are no validation errors. I'm going to look at it one more time. I have purpose over here on the far right. I really would actually like purpose on the far left. So let's see what we can do about that. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change the field order. Choosing field order, I can click on purpose and move to the top. Hit OK. And now I can preview my database again. And you can see now I have purpose on the far left. Now the reality is I could have brought this in and, and imported the, the file and um, brought purpose over to the left after it was already imported, but um, you can do it now or you can do it later. Now that I've got it all defined, I've got my layers saved, everything's looking good, I can either go up to the top here and click this icon import into idea, which would go to the process of importing, or I can choose file, import report into idea, and that once again would work. Proceed with import, yes. You must save the template. I do want to save that template, so I'll call it travel report JPM, save, and I leave the name travel report, finish, and I've got this file. And as you can tell, it's brought in from top to bottom. Now, as we've learned in class, we want to run some control totals. So let's run a control total, hit field statistics, yes, and you should wind up with amount of being 177,929.09 and miles 348,007. Now another way, of, another uh, additional level of checking your control totals is to um, verify the subtotals. You remember how the, the report had subtotals? So let's go and look at that for a second. Um, I'm going to run a data summarization analysis summarization on conferences and I'm going to summarize the amount. Okay, summarization. I'm going to summarize on purpose and I want to summarize the amount because we have subtotals and I'll just leave it named summarization. So these are the numbers that should verify and, and uh, agree with our uh, print report. Let's go and verify that and then we're done. So all I did to be able to pull up those check totals is I went over the PRN file and opened it up in Word. So you can see that the first purpose is 13,388.99. That is your conferences. So 13,388.99, that seems to match. Let's continue. Next one was, um, our next group was training. And that training subtotal was 106.755.68, 107, 106.755.68, let's go back and check that again, 106.755.68, that matched. And then the last one is 57.784.42, 57.784.42, and once again we could also verify the number of records. But I'm pretty confident we brought this in right and we're getting the total sums correct and I think we're good. So I hope this uh, maybe provided a little other insight into that process of importing a PDF and I wish you all the best. Aloha.